Okay, good morning, everybody. Today is March the 6th, the 26th of Adar Aleph. We are... Rosh Chodesh is Thursday, Friday. We are continuing with the sugya on in Chulin on Daf Yud Amud Bet. I want to begin with a question that Ezra Shor threw out the last couple minutes of our Chabura last week, and I want to just talk about it because I think it's very worthwhile because I think it's actually a um, a fundamental point. Ezra asked a question. We are, the Gemara asks on Daf Yud. The Gemara asks a question, how do we know, where did the Chachamim get the principle that we go according to Chazaka? And the Gemara, as we saw last week, and we'll talk about it again, takes us to Tzarat, right? Nega Tzarat. Ezra asks a question at the end, wait a second, why do we need a Pasuk for Chazaka? Why isn't it a Sfara? Why isn't it obvious? Right? Fair. It's fair question. So we know fundamentally when you, when you learn Gemara, you don't, if you can prove something based on Sfari, you don't need a Pasuk. Pasuk is a Chidush Ledina. So therefore, the Gemara is implying there is something without this Pasuk, we would assume you would not go according to Chazaka. Right? And therefore, we need a Pasuk to tell us, no, 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 go according to Chazaka. Okay. I would like to argue, which I think is a fair argument, that Chazaka is a Chiddush, that if not this Pasuk, you wouldn't go according to Chazaka. And in fact, I believe our Gemara told us that a daf earlier. Let me explain. What were to happen, remember the case of a uh, poisonous snake in a hole, right? So remember this case? What do we do? What do we find? What do we find? We found a fruit. Remember this? We found the food item, so I call it a fruit. And we found in this fruit a hole. And in this hole, we're like, well, we don't know. Maybe what happened? Maybe a snake bit it. Maybe a snake bit it and put poison, poison into this hole. Right? That was the Gemara. So the problem with this Gemara, you have to flip a few pages, right? Um, here. We are Choshesh Shema B'makom Nekev Nakav. That maybe we are concerned that Sakanat Nafasha, where the Daf Tet Amud Bet at the top, the top line, that we're very worried. We're very worried that we hear we have a hole in a fruit when it comes right. Remember the idea of Mai Magulim, right? That we're case situation where we're worried about maybe a snake deposited venom. What did we say? Remember when it came to how come when it, we were lenient when it came to the finding a tooth. Tooth mark in the in the uh, lungs. We say no, no, no. That's okay. Why? Because we have. Uh, we could argue that what? That's such a big. What are the odds of a that the zev bavet taraf that he inserted his finger and inserted his teeth into a pre-existing hole? Remember this right. into a pre-existing hole, and we said, "Be <laughs> just the front door." <laughs> Sorry, um, Josh, your turn. <laughs> um, that we're, we're, we are worried in terms of. Uh, we're not worried that a Zaev came and put his teeth through a pre-existing hole, meaning which would have rendered it a trefa. We're not choshesh for that. We are choshesh, however, that when a, maybe a nachash inserted venom, that we are choshesh. So the Gemara, their answers a very important question. What's the answer the Gemara gives? There's a difference yeah, in the two cases. Because, because one's actually physically dangerous and one of them is... Yeah. Spiritually dangerous, right? Yeah. When it comes to a sakana, we are very concerned that someone's going to die. We're very worried that you can die. When it comes to sakana, we're machmir. When it comes to isura, we're meiko. Remember that? That was the statement that we gave. So, what do we see from here? If I have a suffix about poison, right? Is there poison, is there venom in this food item? Do we rely on Chazaka? No. No. We don't rely on Chazaka. Because we're going to die. You follow? Mm -hmm. Meaning, when it comes to danger, I have a Chazaka, but I don't understand. I have a Chazaka that maybe, um, I don't understand. I have a Chazaka here that this fruit has no reason why I would assume that there should be any venom inside of it. There's a bite mark there. Ah, there's a bite mark there. But just because I have a bite mark there doesn't mean 
No, careful. What do I see here? I see a bite my right. But I have. There was a snake. Doesn't mean there was a snake. Doesn't mean there was poison in the snake. Yeah, but that's enough to take it out. I mean, it's, probably, not, it's not like it's not like this. But the probability, you know, the probability is that the bite mark came from like a mouse or something. Right. That's the right. So I don't have many. I have a bite mark. But I don't. No, I don't have a bite mark. I have a hole. Right. I have a neck of. I don't have a bite mark. I have a hole. Right. I don't have venom. I don't see a snake slithering around anywhere. I, all I have is a hole. Why should I assume that hole was made by a snake? The chazaka is, is that I don't see any snakes around here. I have no. I just see a hole. Why should I assume that? Why should I assume that a snake inserted venom into that hole? Right. But we see when it comes to sakana danger, we're machmir. We won't have that fruit. We're not going to have that fruit. When it comes to iser, how can we be lenient? How can we lean in by Yisr? So I think the reason is, you know why we're leaning by Yisr? Because God says we're leaning by Yisr. Meaning, if you imagine if we, uh, kosher food. If you eat non-kosher food, we should be machmer. Hashem said, don't eat tray food. We don't eat tray food. Oh, what about if it's unlikely this? Don't eat it. You're, God told you that there's spiritual poison in eating food that's not kosher. Don't eat it. What about if it's one in a million? So what? Yeah, if you, would you do something you had a one million chance of dying? I don't think so. Yeah. One in a thousand? Okay, whatever. <laughs> one in a thousand, right? We do that at all the time. We do that all the time. Right. Okay, fine. One in a hundred, right? One in a thousand. Right? We do, there are many things that we won't do. It's, it's very unlikely that you're going to get killed. You still wouldn't do it. Okay, what exactly that number has to be, I guess, depends on your level of um, uh, your risk tolerance, right? Okay, ski, you can't tell me one out of a hundred people die skiing. No, not one out of a hundred. Rav Willig says you can't ski. Really? Rav Willig says you can't yeah. ski? Yeah. No way. way. Yeah. Because it's so dangerous? Yeah. On the little bunny hill. What was that? He doesn't want to eat the road hockey. Oh. Okay. Also, you know what else? He's, anyways, I, I'm on Ontario. record, so I can't say something. What? You're worried about people dying on the little bunny hills around Ontario? Right. I mean, it's just ski. Maybe he, I don't think he means like Ontario ski. I don't know what he means. I, I, I don't, I've never heard it, but Water okay. Thing. Water skiing. I don't know. Wow. There might be a shark in the lake. No. I don't know. Maybe so. Then it was usher. How could how could any orthodox institution have a ski trip that we violate uh, Rav Willa? I don't know. That's very uh, that's very problematic now. <laughs> okay. I think there's other posts that maybe disagree. I can't imagine he's the. Uh... Anyways, doesn't matter. But what does matter is that we have a we have a certain amount of risk tolerance. It's true, but I, I bet you if one hundred people died skiing. No one here would go, would go skiing. <laughs> right. First of all, every ski would, hill would be under major lawsuits, especially in America. Right? Oh, you'd be signing waivers before you start. You do sign a waiver? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sign a waiver no. anyways. You sign a waiver for everything. No, you don't. You want to sign a waiver when you ski? Yeah. You must. Yeah. Only when you rent you the just equipment. Sign a waiver but it doesn't matter. If they're negligent, it doesn't matter. Only when you rent the equipment. Really? Yeah, they made all the people who rent the equipment sign waivers, but I didn't have to sign one. It's not a big deal if you die, but you break their equipment when you die. It's yeah, they don't care where you're dying. They're sure you're breaking equipment, right? Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> right, you're just signing that if you break equipment, you'll pay for it or something. Yeah. I mean, that's just probably what you're signing. You're not signing that if you die on the ski hill. Yeah. You know, I can't sue them. If they're negligent, they're negligent. But we sign away before you went water rafting. Like for what? They're not going to... That your life is in there. Like, you know, Although they're, they're negligent. Like, like if they whatever. leave something on the hill and you trip over it. Why water rafting? They said, like, you know, okay, but not one risk of dying. No, there's no way one of a hundred. Not even one in a thousand yeah, people. Not even one in a ten thousand people right, die skiing. Yeah. There's no way you could get, you could go skiing or you could go white water rafting. Even one in ten. Even, even skydiving, one in ten thousand people don't die. Yeah, but that's not a matter of death. That's a matter of injury, right? Yeah. Look, Do one in ten thousand people get injured skiing? Maybe. That could be. <laughs> that could be. <laughs> right? I'm not saying that's injured. Right, right. No, I agree. But. A broken limb? Mm-hmm. The one right... Well, yeah, like, I know people who have not My friend tore his shoulder. I broke my wrist like, and you know. Blue Mountain yeah. on a Shabbat time when I wasn't even skiing. I was the only person ever to break a limb <laughs> not skiing in Blue Mountain. <laughs> oh. <laughs> my friend tore his shoulder at Earl Bales. He was the only instance but, why Shabbat time ever went on. No, you always see though, that emergency vehicle going around the hill when you're skiing. Yeah. <laughs> Picking up people. Yeah. Plus there's people yeah. on the hill to lift. Okay. <laughs> Meaning, yeah. So, uh, yeah. It doesn't matter. I mean, what my point is, gentlemen, <laughs> that when it comes to Sakana, we won't take a chance because we don't want to die slash get injured. But when it comes to Isura, in theory, God said don't eat non kosher food. How can we eat one in a thousand? doesn't matter if it's spiritual poison, spiritual poison. 
The Chiddush, basically goes back to Ezra's question, is that no, God said, put it under a chazaka. Ah, oh, what about my spiritual poison? Doesn't matter. That's the Chiddush of the Torah. Meaning, if not for the fact that the Torah says we go according to Chazaka, we would assume that we should not go according to Chazaka, just like by Sakana, and therefore we wouldn't do certain things. And that's why all the Chidushim of, that exist in terms of Bittol, into all those things, are Chidush. Are, are, are chidush. And that's why I need a Passover to prove them. Okay? Because it's not obvious. It's spiritual poison. Why would you eat something? Why would you consume something that has a chance at one in a thousand? One in t- doesn't matter. Spiritual po- you'd never do it if it was physical danger, physical poison. Okay? This is just the Chazaka by uh, Isur. Because in, in Chazaka, they do establish Chazaka based on Sfar. Right? Yes, I'm not talking about that to Chazaka. Right. I'm talking about... I'm talking about the, the terminology actually that I saw. He actually had a good. He had a good one for it. I saw it yesterday when I was reading this. He called it. He made it. He called it Cheska de Goof, where. What did he say here? Yesh Cheska de Goof. That's what he says. The honey, but often she miskapkim im nishtane mitziot shal davar kolshu. Shemamidim oto al cheskato, shaitabo kodam asafek. Velo told him shinishtane gufo mitzioto, mikfi shahaya. Ad hazman shivad elon in nishtane. Right? We don't assume things changed. Right? There's no reason that things changed. Um, so, that's what he's saying, right? Well, why, why, why should things change? Right? Meaning there's a. But that's a chiddush. So. Okay. No. Um, <clears throat> and by the way, same idea with, with Chazakat Adin, the Din of the status meaning, so we take the, the non kosher animal, there's a Chazaka, this is an Ever Minachai, that's the Chazaka we're placing it on, until you could tell me with certainty that's changed, that's our status. Okay, that's the Okay, so that was kind of what, what I think um, goes back to Ezra's question of, yes, I do think Chazaka is a Chiddush. When it comes to Isura, Chazaka is a Chiddush. Mm-hmm. The fact that we establish Chazaka of what a situation is, and, you know, this is safe, this is okay, this is this is that, that those types of chazakas, not your type of chazakas, as you just mentioned. The, right. the, but in the case of Tzarat, you're not being oh. Mekel, you're being Machmer. Okay, so now let's go back to the Tzarat case. Good. And that leads to a very difficult Tosfot. Um, very difficult Tosfot. It's difficult because it's conceptually difficult, and it's difficult because it brought, like a classic Tosfot, literally brings in six ideas <laughs> and assumes you understand everything. And quotes various Gemaras in like two words and asks a question on himself and an answer on himself. That's what I want to kind of navigate through today, which is a little complicated. I hope we can do it today. We might not even be able to do it all today because it's a little complicated. Um, let's just remind ourselves. Let's see the, the, the line that Toso pertains to is, is going back to what Ezra said. Let's see that again. And then we'll see the Toso inside. I want to read the, just o- the opening couple lines of the Gemara. Let's read that again. Uh, we are on. Right, we're lo- lo- right. right across from Lokar of Chizda. Thank you. There's like a period there. A, there is a Magamara. There's a dot there by the words Kavodar Shochacham. Okay? Ezra, you want to read for us? Minaha Milta, go. Minaha Milta, Dama Rabbanan, Uke Milta, Achazake. So again, the question the Gemara asks is How do we know that you hold something by the previous Chazake? Right, which is interesting language. Okay, go. Okay, go ahead. I'm going to go with that last week. Amar Rabbi Shmuel. Amar Rabbi Shmuel bar Nachmani, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Amar Kra, Biyatsa, Koen, Min Abayit, El Petach Abayit, Vizgir, Tabayit, Shiva, Yamin. Okay, so wait, wait, what's the case? So the, the, when the Kohen has to declare it uh, Tzorat, so he leaves the house, he stands outside the house, he closes the house, oh. and then he declares it uh Musgur. Yeah. Right. So again, yeah, the nega has to be a certain size, right? It has to be, it can't just be a, a, something small. It has to be the size of a, um, has to be the size of a, not a, because a, what's the size of the nega? Okay, but what I do, I remember the size of the nega. 
One square inch. Right, I said by it is one square inch. Okay. Anyway, it has to be a large. Go on. Dilma Adinafik Atta Batra Le Shiura. So how do we know that in the time that he left, you know, he didn't he didn't declare it inside. By the time he left, it, the the shiur of the tzara could have gone down. And how does he know that it's actually tzara in the house? El alav mishum damrinan uke achazaki. But rather, the reason that he can declare it uh, tzara even after he doesn't see it. Agrees. That's it. Agrees. Because yeah. you just assume that the you assume the it's, the nega doesn't doesn't uh, shrink at all. Okay, good. Right. So it was the size of a gris. He took a look at it. He's like, wow, it's the size of a gris. Now he walks out of the house and says. No good. Closes down the shop. Temporarily closes down the shop. Remember this whole thing, you got to clear out everything from your house, right? Remember? So, maybe from that time that he walked, that he saw it, as he walked outside, maybe the Tzarat shrunk. Mm -hmm. Ah, the Gemara says, and the Gemara tries to push that aside. Maybe he walked out backwards. Maybe people told him the whole, remember that whole thing? The end of the day, the Maskan of the Gemara is in Achinami. That what? Chazaka. Okay? Meaning, it didn't shrink. So let's go through, what's the chazaka? The chazaka is that he sees it, that it's a certain size, the size of a gris. Two minutes later, he declares it a musgar, and we assume that it didn't shrink. Why? The chazaka. The chazaka is the size of a gris two minutes ago. Why should I assume that it shrunk? Sure. That's the Gemara's proof. of chazaka. Okay. I have a handout. For this toast host. One, two. What I did was I broke it down. Into different sections. What's that safer called? The breaks down toast host? I wish we had one last night. What's it called? Uh, oh. Don't they do it in this? No, I don't think so. Do they? Shari toast host. Shari toast host. I don't know if shari toast host. You're in a toast host. What do they do? Do they? To be honest, it didn't even occur to me. No way, they do? That's the whole point. Of oh my goodness. I did all that work last night for nothing? Is that what you're trying to tell me? I was up yeah. to like 1 o'clock in the morning? Not for nothing. Not for nothing. Not for nothing. Not for nothing. That's a show. Yeah. Whoa. Oh my goodness. Did I just photocopy this? Or not even? Whoa. I guess I should look through this. Okay. Okay, fine. We'll, we'll we'll check my work. We'll check my work with uh, what what the safer here says. Okay, but let's read this together. <clears throat> you can. I mean, it doesn't matter. You can follow along in one of three options: in the handout, you can follow along in this bure tosva, you can follow along uh, in an actual tosva itself. You can you can choose what you want to do. It doesn't really matter. I'll do a little bit of both. Here we go. Vidilma, adinafik Va'ase batzar leishur. So the Gemara says maybe the, when he walked out, the nega shrunk, right? The nega shrunk. It is no longer the size of the tuma. It is now shrunk. Okay, that's the thing. Here we go. Anyone want to help me read through this tosva? Be a little bit brave to read through the tosva. Anyone want to sure. tackle it? Josh, want to try? Do I know? Don't worry. Yeah, Josh, go for it. <laughs> Shimmy, you want to try? Okay, okay. Try, don't worry. Okay. Go. Read slowly. Uh, okay. In the hakshot, hefe muchach mehacha, deuki milta achazaki. Okay. So, what is Tosva saying? Saying, so don't ask me. I mean, right. implicitly. There's a kasha. <laughs> right. You, how, do you know, how do you know from here that okay. it's Okay, very good. Right? So, you might think you should ask this question, but please don't ask this question. Because I'm going to answer it. Because I'm going to answer it, right? So, he, so you should have asked. So, right, exactly. So that's what makes it good. You should have asked this question. I know you're going to ask this question, so I'm going to, like, shotgun the question. I say, don't ask this question. <laughs> right? So that's what, that's what the beginning phrase is a strange terminology. Like, it's not, shall we say, how you normally write. But okay, well, it's tough. So let's go on. Okay. Dioma hacha tame misafik, the safik tuma gurushu tayafid. Time. Okay, let me explain this a concept. This is, okay. We, I dealt with this very tangentially a while ago, but it's worthwhile repeating. The Gemara learns in many places from Sota. Here's what happens. By a woman who is being questioned because she secluded herself with a man. Right? And now what are we saying? 
that she is a chazaka, she's an HS ish, right? She's married. Now she secluded herself in a room. And now we're saying maybe she did something which was inappropriate. The, that is what's called, are you ready? Safek Tuma. Do we know what she did? We don't know what she did. Birushus Hayachid, asked me in a private area. The Gemara says, Sfeko Tame. She's Tame. So this applies to all Tuma. Meaning, I don't know if I have, do I have, was this, I found a dead body. Was this a dead body? You touched, you were in a room with a dead body. It was, sorry, you were with a body. Safek, if this body was alive or dead. Safek, Tuma, Perushu Sayachid, you're Tame. Can you figure out no, so let's alive? say what happens is, is that by the time you inspect, meaning, do you see how, there's a ghost, the guy's a ghost ace. Okay. He's a ghost ace. You don't know if the person's alive or dead. You walked into the room, right? You were there for 10 minutes, well, I forget the room, walked into the building, right? You know the person died. What time did the person die? You don't know. Safek Tuma Bershusa Yachid, Safeko Tame. Okay? Tame. What about if it's in Rishus Harabim? In Rishus Harabim, Sfeko Tahor. The Gemara learns this from Sota. Okay? And it applies to all types of Tuma and Tara. Blah, blah, blah. Tuma and Tahara. Doesn't matter if it's Taraz, doesn't matter if it's a Zav, doesn't matter if it's a Tumay Mace, doesn't matter if it's a, your Tuma that was touched by an insect. By the way, there's another example. If an an, if a sh- did a di- but are you ready for this? The card gives the case of a chulda, of a, uh, a rodent that's holding on. What was that? <laughs> holding on to a dead, uh, a, dead, uh, a dead bug. Best kasha ever. A dead bug. And as this animal's walking, the question is did the dead sherets touch the truma? So if it's the Rishus Yachid, Tame. Rishus Rabim, Tahor. Okay, that's, what the, that's a very obscure case, but that's what the. People are mentioning this case a lot. By the way, this came up. Where did it come up? Did you do this in Pesachim last Sanfair. year? Sanfair. Yeah, I think I've, it comes in Pesachim. Whenever there's a chulda, you always assume it's Pesachim. Right, oh, that's the, hmm? the carrying bread from location A to location yeah. B. Anyways, so what matters here, what matters here is, is that you might say, let's go back, wait a second. Why do I, this is not a very good proof for what? Chazaka. Why don't we just say, Mr. Cohen, this shear of a gris is Safek Tuma Birushu's Hayachid Sveko Tame. So, why, this is, don't tell me I learned from here, Chazaka. There's a principle called Safek Tuma Birushu's Hayachid Sveko Tame. So, it's not a Chazaka that it's still the size of a gris. We are in a private location. We've established that it's no good. You want to tell me there's a suffix if it shrunk because it's been three minutes? It doesn't matter if it's been three minutes. Why? Suffix to mabrashu sayachid sveikotame. It's not going to change the status. That's Tosfos' shotgun question. Right? Now. That's a bad question. What was that? Sounds like a good question. It's a, no, it's a great question. So he's going to look what he has to do now. Now, look how he answers it. Go on. Okay. Shimmy. Stop. Okay. So he says, I'm going to tell you something very important. Meaning, this is not Rishu Sayachi. This is Rishu Sarabim. You know why? There's a lot of people around here. There's the owner, there's the Kohen, there's the wife, there's the kid. And, by the way, there's this concept here called the Ein Bodas Lehisha. If we can ask somebody to verify, then meaning, okay, this ghost says is dead. So that's not going to be very helpful for us, right? They're a dead body case. But if we could actually interview somebody and ask them the situation and they can clarify it, meaning, did you put this lid on top of this or not? Did you see what happened? If, you could, if there's someone you could talk to to clarify a situation, we'll be much more lenient because we can verify it. You can't ask a house, you can't ask a nega, did you shrink or not? So it's called the Ein Bo Das Lisha, you can't ask them. You can't ask animals, you can't ask houses. So, he said the fo- so that's what Tosfot here is saying. Tosfot is saying the following, that 
No. This really has a status of Afilu Havei Rishus HaRabim Sheyesh Bahar Ben Adam Afilu Davar Shein Bodas Tishel Meaning, even if it's not a human being Meaning, we are going to, in theory, we could have been lenient here Why could we have been lenient? Because maybe we could have asked other people, did you see it shrink? Or, this maybe this is the status of Rishus HaRabim Okay, that, the truth is, is not the most important part of Tosfos The next part is so again, just to repeat, you might say this is a bad example of learning Chazaka, because we can say that it's considered Safek Tumor Shusa Yachid, and therefore it should be Tame. Plus what dismisses and says, no, 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 it's Kim Shusa, it's Shusa, it's Shusa Rabbim, Ain without Sishal, dismissed. Now here's this bomb question. Go ahead. Aval Kasha. Aval Kasha, the Tena Hecha, the Lake Ariusa. Okay. Remember, let's compare this case of Tzarat to our knife case. Tosfa says, this is a terrible proof. How can you bring Tzarat as a proof that we establish according to Chazaka? This is nothing like our knife case. Why not? Why is this Tzarat case different than our knife case? Remember, we're talking about a knife that has a dent into it. The Gemara says, where did we learn Chazaka from? Tzarat. Ask Tosvot, how can you bring Tzarat as an example of Chazaka? It's a terrible example. It's not comparable to a knife. Why not? That's what, that's what he says here. And here's the, here's the reason why not. Hecha de Leika Reusa. What's Leika Reusa? What's missing in the Tzarat case? There's no... There's no reason to think that it shrunk. Why not? Very... Because... It's... It didn't shrink. In the Did, knife case, we see a dent. Very good. In the, the only reason why I'm suspicious about my knife, I have a dent in my knife. So we said, maybe the guy, was, the guy smashed bones, remember the whole thing, right? Yeah. But I have a dent in my knife. If I have a dent in my knife, I'm asking a question. My knife is no good. I see it's no good. I have a reusa. I have an X. I have something which is problematic in my knife. What? Well, I make sense that I question my chazaka, my knife is okay. I see a dead. But by tzarat? Why should I shrunk? I don't have a use that I shrunk. So why should I shrunk? So this is a terrible example, says Tosvot, of a proof that we go according to chazaka. That's nice going to chazaka. But I want to go according to chazaka when there's a reusa. That's my knife. That's a that's a question. That's a good question. Yeah. That's a very good question. How could, your apples and oranges? My tsara case is a vanilla case. My knife case. That's a really good question. This is not going to prove that in a case where there's a reusa, we go according to chazaka. This is not a good proof for that. This is a good proof, and there's no qu- reason to question the status. Why we're going to chazaka? Okay. Now let's read that second half shimmy please inside. Avalhecha. Avalhecha de Ikarusa. Kigon Saki and Shanim say Piguma. Okay, that, but, now he's about to give you another thing, which we're not, okay? okay? Now here's the other thing which he says. Okay, I gotta explain that case. <laughs> okay. Echad Mishnaim Shanitma is three words that is a complicated, but not that complicated. Here's the case. You ready? There's a Nazir. There are two Nazirim, and they're walking <whistles> in a public domain. And they each take two paths? Is it this case? No, no, not the best, but that is a good case. That, but that's not this that's case. like a riddle or something? Right, <laughs> no. No, all of a sudden, a piece of a dead body flies through the air. One guy puts his finger up in the air, that tries to make a catch, and it ricochets off his hand. So a kazais of mace hits one of the two Nazirim. But you have no idea which one it was. You're watching it. You know there's two Nizirim walking in a public domain. And a piece of kazais of maize hits one of them. So it's a case of Safek, Tuma, that hits one of them. Which one does it hit? We have no idea. And you ask the Nazir, did you just like get a piece of... Uh, Dead flat. I know you're talking about. But we have witnesses who say, "I know it touched you." You know it's like in tag football. You touch, and the kids come flat. You touch. You never. I never felt your hand. You never hand never touched me. Never touched me. I didn't feel your hand. Right. It's the same idea. Right. I never felt the 
Dead? Same idea. <laughs> well, I never felt the dead flash touch me. I never felt the hand tag me and touch football. Right? You had a good comparison? Let's go on. I don't know what's the... No, I mean, they're kids. So they're... Anyways. Now, okay, so what happens, by the way, with the Nazir? So in the case of a Nazir, let me read to you. I wrote it down over here. It is... Uh, I could just tell it to you outside if I didn't write it down. I meant to copy and paste it so I could read you the case inside. Give me one second. I'll read. It. I want to read you the case inside. It's a strange conclusion that the Gemara gives. Here we go. Okay. So, no, that's the toast house. Where did I put that? Okay, if not, I'll just touch you outside. Okay, I'll touch you outside. Um, the Gemara concludes, the Gemara Nazar says that they bring a korban, Tuma and Tahara. Let me explain. What happens if a Nazir comes in contact with Tamei Meis during his Yemei Naziratel? So he has to bring a Korban Tuma. Right? It's a whole process. And what happens if you complete your process of Biyom Tarato? You also bring a Korban. So with each one, the Gemara says, each one of these two Nazirim bring a Right away, a korban tuma, and they say, "If what, I was tame. Fine, here's my korban tuma. If I was tahor, doesn't count." In thirty days from now, one guy brings a korban tuma, uh, korban tahara, saying, "I finished my days of being a Nazarite." And if I was tame, this doesn't count. One guy, the other guy, does the exact same thing. So, what do we see from here? Here's a case of, we have a reyusa, we have a status that he's a chazaka, we question the status, right? We question the status, because we see the, and what do we say? That they both have to bring a korban. So, now you'll appreciate the rest of Toto. Let's continue reading, please. V'chein echad mishnayim shenitma. V'chein echad mishnayim shenitma. V'arai b'rshut harabin d'metarin shneim mitam chazaka. So, what do we see from here? We go, now, where are these guys walking? These guys are walking in Rishus. So the Gemara there says, if it's a Rishus Harabim, we are metahir at because we have a Chazaka. If it's, if it's a Rishus, sorry, but let me go back. But it, we, we bring a Korban Tahar and a Korban Tuma only if it's in a private location. If it's in a public location, both guys are Tahar. Why? Safek, Tuma, Rishus, Arabim, Sfek, Tahar. Okay? So that's what this is. If it's Vada, Rishus, Arabim, both guys are pure. Why both guys pure? Safek, Tuma, Rishus. But again, for something like that, we have a Shnehem at the Chazaka. But again, how come we have a Reyusa? Why doesn't that challenge the Chazaka? That's the Tosfos question. Okay. Okay, so that's the end of Tosfos question. Bomb question. Again, we care more about our knife case because that's our topic. So the question for a knife case is, how come this is a good proof from Tzara'at? It shouldn't be a good proof. Tzara'at, puh! I have no reusa. I'm not questioning the status of my nega. My knife, I'm questioning. How is this pasuk a good proof? It's a terrible proof. It has nothing, it's totally different than my knife case. My knife case is a much greater ante. Okay? Here's his answer. Listen to this. The Yehishlomar. BJ, you want to take out the Yehishlomar? You want to show the answer? Oh, he's going to say, I'm going to find you a Reyusa Gedola by Taras. And look what he does. Go on. Ish Tahach Shahasar Lahar Shiva 
Beautiful. Good. So here he says, I'm going to create you a case. Ready? Where there's a reyusa. Listen to this. What would to happen if I'm... So remember, my house has been closed down. It's been... Um, What's it called? Not to get it. It's been uh, uh, condemned. Condemned. Thank you. It's been condemned for seven days. What happens if on day three a guy goes into this house just to walk around, right? <whistles> walks around. Here we go. George walks into a house on day three, into this Musgar house. On day seven, the Cohen comes back into this house and says, "Hey, this nigga, it's drunk. Good news. It's all clean. Everyone back home." That guy who walked in on day three, what's his status? Is he Tahor or Tameh? Again, on day seven, on day seven, the Cohen says, shrunk. The guy on day three who walked into this house, he's Tameh or Tahor? He's Tameh. He's Tameh. Why? Cohen hmm? So here it is. So says Tosfo, you don't understand. But there's a suffix, it's suffix to me. So, here we go. I have a reyusa. Now I have a reyusa. What's my reyusa? I have a questionable status. Meaning, the status of Tame is being questioned. Because what's happened now with my because, nega? Because it shrunk. shrunk. It shrunk by the time he walked in. Maybe it shrunk, not on, maybe it shrunk the second the Cohen walked away. Seven days earlier. Or maybe it shrunk on day two and the guy on day three. So here we go. Here we have a reyusa, meaning, you have to put this language in your head. The reyusa here is that a shrunk. Meaning, reyusa doesn't always mean bad. In this case, reyusa is good. You follow? Meaning, my reyusa is questioning my suffering. Well. I'm questioning my chazaka. That's, I'm teaching status quo, exactly. Mm-hmm. My re, just like I have a dent in my knife, which challenges status quo, I have a shrunken nega, which challenges status quo. But when I challenge status quo, I revert... I have a reyusa, and I go back to my status quo. When I have a shrunken nega, I don't go and say what? That that shrunken nega took place earlier. No, I, ju- I see it now. It happened now. Therefore, on day three, that guy still taught me. We go back to the last confirmed status. We go back to the last. We don't assume it happened the earliest possible time. We assume it happened at the latest possible time. It happened 10 seconds ago. That's when it happened. And anyone from day one to day seven who walked in, tame. So here, therefore, Tosvot says, I can use tzarat as an example, because by nega tzarat, when I have a questionable reyusa, I'm questioning my status quo, what can happen? I revert to my original chazaka, my original chazaka, where there's a nega tzarat, the size of a gris, and it's tuma, even with a reyusa. And yet, here's the pu- therefore, the pasuk of negat sarat can be used even when there's a reyusa in my challenging my chazaka. So therefore, this is applicable to anybody. I can use this for the Nazar case. I can use this for my knife case. I can use it for shkoyech, mazel tov. Okay? Good? That's what we... Also works with the house before because before it's deeds tuma that its last confirmed status is not. Yes, right, right. Meaning the second he sees the tzarat on the wall, oh, he's walking outside two minutes later. It doesn't matter. We go according to chazaka. Ah, oh, we don't have a reyusa. Fine. On day seven, we have a reyusa for my status. We don't say that it happened seven days earlier. It only happened right now. Last confirmed status. Okay. But now, he says, wait a second. But now he's bringing a case. Um, <clears throat> he's bringing another case. Umi hukasha. He says, oh, wait a second. I got a problem, though. So far, so good. This is, this is easy. So far, we're good. This, we're, we made great headway through this toss one. Really excited. That's great. But now look at the end. Okay. Um, let's talk about a mikvah. Mikvah needs to be how many sa? 40. 40. 40 sa. Okay. What happens if I discover a person goes to the mikvah, comes out, I check the, uh, you know, like, you know, like I guess so there's like a little, like a leveler, like a line. I see there's a line dipped. 
the level of my water dipped under this line. Okay? So what happens, and that's called a mikvah shenimdad v'nimsa chaser. Right? Meaning, we measured the mikvah and it was discovered that it was missing. Missing the 40 sa'ah. What's the status of that person? What's the status of that person? So, take a look at the end of Tosva. Let's read the mikvah case. Ezra, take it away. Mihu kasha. Mihu kasha. De hach milta damya la mikvah shenimdad v'nim tzachaser de shavkinan le chazaka de mikvah Stop. Okay. So it says Tosvot, when a guy goes to the mikvah, when a guy before walks into the mikvah, what's the status of this guy? Tame. He's Tame. Right? The mikvah was measured and the mikvah was? 40 sa. 40 sa. Now the guy comes out. Last time we measured the mikvah, it was 40 sa. Now the guy comes out. And what happens? The, we check the mikvah. Well, what do we say? Says Tosvot. Hemid tamel chatzkato. What do we say? We go according to the chaz. What was the... No, sorry. We, we go according to the... We have two chazakas that are bound each other. The status of the man before was... Tame. And the status of the mikvah was... the status of the mikvah was tahor. So you have one chazaka versus another chazaka. Right? Man versus mikvah. Right? Man versus mikvah. It sounds like man versus machine, right? Wow. What? It's like a sh- it's man sh- versus fan. <laughs> man versus fan. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, what do we see from here? Uh oh. So, Tosa says, um, wait a second. Let's, let's compare this case to our Tzara case. Because here we go. Oh, but the man's tower when he enters the house. When the very uh, excellent, very good. When the man enters the house on day three of Tzarat, what's the status of this man? Tough. He's tower. It's irrelevant if he's tumor. The question. The man walks into the house on day three. He's tower. What do we say? We say that this mikvah. Sorry, we say that the man is. Tame, why do we say he's Tame? Because we have a Chazaka that on day one it was Tame. Oh, on day seven we see it's Chaser, it doesn't matter. We go according to the Chazaka of day one. Chazaka of day one was Tuma. I don't care that on day seven my Chazaka is being challenged. We go according to Ah, the Reusa. I'm challenging my Chazaka, it doesn't matter. Go according to day one. Day one it is Tame. You walk in on day three, you're toast. Tosfot says, wait a second. Let's compare this to our mikvah case. A guy walks in. Let's, but, what, so you have to flip around the, the variables, though, because it, the variables are the same, but it's the person versus the mikvah. So let's compare apples to apples, right? The status of the mikvah is good. The status of the house is no good, right? That's the, that's the chazaka. Yeah. Chazaka of the house is no good, and the chazaka of the mikvah, that it is good. Okay? At the end of the process, meaning on day seven, the chazaka is challenged. Today, my chazaka that my mikvah is good is challenged. You follow? Right? Because it's chaser. I'm challenging my chazaka of the house because the tzara, the nega, has shrunk. You follow? I'm I'll give apples, right? Right? So far, so good. We get that? Okay. What do we say by mikvah? What do we say? Do we go according to the chazaka by the mikvah? No, we don't go according to the chazaka of the mikvah. We say, what do you mean? I'm measuring right now. It's no good. That's what it says. I don't understand. How come the guy went to the mikvah should be good? I, the, the mikvah is 40 son. It was fine. The house was tame. We don't challenge and change the status of the house because we have a question it now. So why do we challenge the status of the mikvah if we find it now? Maybe because in both cases we have one suffix, two men, one suffix, kosher. And That's just, it. It, it, it doesn't, ma- doesn't matter. Both are suffix isura. Suffix isura. Suffix tuma. It's suffix, but both cases are suffix tuma. Tuma of taras, tuma of whatever the guy's status was. Why does it matter? 
So now Tosvat is in trouble. He's like, I can't. Well, it doesn't. There's a time difference because when he walks in on the third day, so you don't know that there's there's the, anything until the seventh day. So you say you don't really know if it was on the first day, second day, third day. But when he's after his tovel, you check right away. Now the you say now right now the mikvah is questionable. We don't know if it happened before. Um, or after. Okay, very good. The Gemara even says that if the guy if it was discovered two days later. We go back and we say, buddy, you're in trouble. In fact, this, it's a case that's brought up by a woman who goes, uh, not, go, woman goes to the mikvah in a faraway land. Okay, that's not true, in a faraway place. No, again, again, a woman goes to the mikvah and out of town, because locally she has no mikvah. She comes back home two days later, she has a phone call. Uh oh. We just checked our mikvah. She goes to the mikvah on a Thursday. They checked the mikvah Sunday. No good. The mikvah was too short. We haven't checked this mikvah in a week. Guess what? She has to go back to the mikvah. Okay? So, trying to say a time thing. But, interesting. Interesting if that would matter or not. So, Tosfut says, I, I don't have an answer. That's what he says. He can't really answer himself. Everyone understand the question? So again, I want to go through it again. Both cases are a case where we have a chazaka. Chazaka of a house has tzara'at. Chazaka of a mikvah, that is 40 sa'at. In both cases, we're questioning that chazaka. By tzara'at, the nega has shrunk. By the mikvah, the mikvah has shrunk. We're questioning our chazaka. Yet by the tzara'at case... The chazaka of the man gets changed. He chazaka that he's tahor. Now we're quite, now we're saying he's tame because of the chazaka of the house. By the man, he is tame, and we don't change his status. We keep his status of tame. And the question is why? Why don't we armamid the chazaka? Just because I have a reyusa now, why don't I go according to the chazaka from earlier? By the mikvah case, we, the chazaka disappears because of the reyusa. By the tzarat case, it doesn't disappear if no, I have a reyusa. Why is there a difference between the two? <laughs> Tosvot says, I, I don't have a, you know, really, he doesn't have an answer. And Tosa does have an answer. There is a very simple answer. And Tosa doesn't say it. There's a very simple answer. The difference between mikvah and tzarat. Very easy answer. Why well, makes sense? We machmir by mikvah. And it's an answer that the Gemara even mentions. There's something that happens by a mikvah naturally. It doesn't happen by tzarat naturally. What happens to mikvah naturally? Mikvah shrinks naturally. Displace water. Displace. You walk into the mikvah, you walk out. Don't you, take, don't, don't you remove automatically? Doesn't water evaporate over time? It's a regular, hum, it's a status. When tzarat doesn't shrink on its own. When tzarat doesn't shrink on its own. No, it doesn't shrink on its own. No. Good question. It doesn't shrink on its own. Right, it's not like uh, 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 um, it's that that term. Uh, by the way, I'll tell you what's even more what bothered me even more. If you take a look at Tosfot here, you see at the end of the Tosfot there's a little letter Tet. So if you go to your little letter Tet, look what it actually says. Where is that little Tet? Here it is. Where's that tat? Where's that tat, gentlemen? Is, it, is that Masasa Shams? Oh, there it is. Yeah, there it is. It's up there. Oh. Ayin, you see this? You see what you see with Masasa Look at Masasa Shams. Masasa Shams gives you the answer. Ayin and Tosfo Nida, Dwar Matchil Hatam, Katvu Yeshuv Alzeh. So if you were to go to the Gemara Nida, the answer is the answer that we just gave. It's what? Over time, it naturally diminishes. 
since the mikvah naturally over time, here's an external factor that they take into consideration. What's this external factor we need to take in, into consideration? This external factor is that the mikvah naturally diminishes. Since the mikvah naturally diminishes, I understand why I would question my chazaka. Mashenki and Sarat. But Tosfot here doesn't bring that answer. But it brings the answer somewhere else. Why doesn't it bring it here? I think there's an, as, uh, something else which I'm not sure we'll get into. But I wanted to just point out that there's a way to answer this Tosfot. How do we answer this Tosfot? Very simple. A mikvah is different. A mikvah naturally shrinks.